Hi, I'm Dwayne from Dwayne's Roses. I was just sitting here looking out the window watching the snow fall and finishing up my coffee and realized I'd much rather be thinking about roses right now than the snow falling outside. That's especially true because I have a seedling here I'm really excited about that I wanted to tell you about. Uh, I'm excited about the seedling more for the seed parent from this plant and I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, but also for this plant so far for being so young, it's really vigorous, it's rooting really well, but most importantly to me at this moment is the fact that it already has a bud right there coming onto it. Now, for most modern roses in breeding, that wouldn't be a surprise. You know, anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks, you look to see the first bloom form on them. But for the crosses with the cold hardy roses, I'm doing it often three four, even five years sometimes before I see the first bloom. I'm doing really good if I get it in the first season or two. So right now I'm really excited that this one is doing so well. I'll go back and explain kind of where this came from and how I came to this seedling uh, to explain why the seed parent might seem so important. And specifically because the genetics that I'm looking to use are actually from a rose you might know and you might grow. And if not, I'd strongly recommend it if you'd want to. But until then, I'll show you some pictures and explain the parents, and then uh, we'll take a closer look at this seedling here before we get into that. Enjoy. Here you can see the view out the window and see why I'm excited about looking at this seedling instead. The bud is almost a greenish, probably will turn white. The branches, you follow it back, see it's freely branching along the branch and then also at the base of the plant, and it looks to be very strong growing. So Lady of Shalot, this started it all, at least as regards this seedling. This one is beautiful, fragrant. The color especially was really nice after a long winter. So um, we love this rose, but even more than for all those things was just how well it did in a border. The color matched, as you can see here, with lavender really well. But it grew large. It died back down, but it grew back every year without losing its vigor. And this was undoubtedly the best performing English rose in our last garden, which was a little bit uh, harsher in the winter than this one by a small degree. And this rose bounced back every year uh, after a hard winter. It died to the ground every winter, except for one where it just died down into the snow. And I had about a foot of cane left, and this was the only English rose that ever happened with. Uh, most died after the first winter, if not after the second. This uh, here, you can see it was actually uh, planted with other perennials in the border at different times, and we just loved its performance. So I decided to use it. I tried as a seed parent first, and it just wouldn't work for several seasons. So I began to use its pollen on all of my seed parents, just trying to get its genetics. And lo and behold, this one, Lily and Austin, uh, which makes a great seed parent and, um, in my opinion, passes on to its offspring uh, much more than I love than even it itself it possesses. So I was pleased that it took uh, pollen so well. It uh, produced a handful of offspring from that cross that I kept to test for a while. In fact, I still have, I think there's three or four of them in the garden still. Um, but uh, Lily and Austin was very preferable, and this was the seed parent to the seedling that came from it, and that is really uh, what I'm excited about. This here is uh, that seedling you can see. So you look at the different pictures, you can see this is when it was a young plant. It was just starting to fill in. Uh, but as you look at the different buds at different stages, you can notice that sometimes it looks like the pollen parent, Lady of Shalott. Uh, at other times, it looks a little closer to the seed parent, Lily and Austin. Uh, but it, it possesses some of the things that I love from each of them. And most importantly, it works as a seed parent. Uh, it passes on to its offspring its first year, even as a young, younger plant, second season, I guess. Uh, I used it and it accepted pollen from Chinook Sunrise and uh, set hips. And I took those seeds, there were only a few seeds, but I did manage to get one to produce a plant and I kept that plant to test. This is it here. Wasn't what I was looking for, but I was excited that this one actually uh, set flower the very first season. What it does possess is very fast repeat from both sides of its parentage, and it also possesses fragrance, which I was pleased with, so it might give me something to work with moving forward. This here is the pollen parent of that one, Chinook Sunrise, and I've used it quite a bit because it does give a uh, offspring right away they call it juvenile remontancy 
it blooms as a baby and then it repeats its bloom. So I'm using this a bit. That was the season before last. So this season I switched to a couple of others. Two I got from High Country Roses. Uh, one is Champagne Arches, which is a climber. And you can see that one here and here's a close up of its bloom. Uh, the other one I received from them was Victorian Memory. Uh, that is also known as Isabella Skinner. Uh, but I purchased that also as a climber to go up over our seeding area. And I'm using pollen from both of those on this seedling this last season as well as uh, I did pollen from another yellow one from another rose breeder, 1173, I'll talk about in another video. Uh, but I used those and it set hips and uh, that is how I came with the seedling that I'm showing you here. This seedling is from a cross of these cold hardy climbers with this seed parent. And that's really exciting news. And we hope, uh, I hope one, obviously that this seedling would go well. Uh, but more importantly, or significant for my breeding anyway, is that this seed parent shows great potential to cross with cold hardy plants and yet still produce juvenile remontancy in the offspring. Well, if you've enjoyed kind of this history lesson of the seedling, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, you can subscribe, hit the notifications if you want to hear about some of these other seedlings you can see in these last few pictures uh, we can kind of do a history on them and uh, not only you know discuss what fragrance they have to go with the color but also perhaps a, a little bit about how they came to be if you're interested let me know thank you